ahead and throw those whole tomatoes in the freezer because I figured out what to do with them. Hi everybody, thanks so much for stopping by the homestead. This is Sarah and Kevin from Living Traditions Homestead and today I am super excited to share with you what I have discovered. Remember a couple weeks ago we uh, did the last harvest of everything from the garden just before the first hard freeze and we still had a ton of tomatoes. We were so fortunate this year to have a bumper crop of tomatoes. Uh, we planted two rows about 50 feet each, uh, a total of 70 plants and over the course of the entire summer and almost into fall we harvested nearly 1,100 pounds of tomatoes. But it got to the point where, hey, we had so much to do, and there were tomatoes coming out of our ears that I just was at my wit's end and I had no idea what to do with all these tomatoes. Right. We were at some times picking, you know, 50 to 60 pounds of tomatoes every other day. Yes. And that's a, that's a lot of tomatoes for, you know, it's not like everything else in the world stops because all of a sudden tomatoes are coming right. right. You know, life still goes on. You still have a lot of things to do other than pick tomatoes or can tomatoes. Right. So what do you, what do you do with them right. when, when you're getting that many and your options are let them rot on the plant or, or figure out a solution? Right. Right. So our solution, rather than letting them rot, rather than selling, rather than selling them at the farmer's market, is seriously, guys, I just put them right into plastic shopping bags whole. I didn't peel them. I didn't take the stems off. I just put them in there and I shoved them in the freezer for another day. And I, I got a lot of questions about that when I talked about it on our video, you know, can you do that? What are you going to do with them? What's going to happen to the skins? And you should have at least taken off the little top. And, you know, I didn't have any other option. So I just did it and figured that I'll just figure it out later. And guess what? I have. And I'm so excited to share with you how to bring them out of the freezer and what to do with them. And then you can process them in a couple different ways and keep them in your canning for the rest of the winter. Right. We've already done this with two, two, batches. two batches of them. Two rounds of them. Which is probably about, what, 100 pounds of tomatoes? Oh, at least. So, so we've, we've tried this already. We know it works. Right. And today we're going to show you what to do with it. Right. There are a couple other situations where this process would be very advantageous. When I was working full time, you know, Monday through Friday, I was busy with work and with kids and, uh, and other, you know, urban homestead things that I was able to really have time to just pick from the garden during the week. I didn't have time to process or anything. So this method would be fantastic for those of you who are still gardening, but also working full time. You have time to pick, but you don't have time to uh, process them during the week. So pick them, throw them in the freezer, deal with them uh, on a weekend that you have time. The other situation which would be perfect for this is when you have just a few tomato plants. And you know, you're getting like four or five tomatoes that ripen at a time. That's not enough to make sauce or whatever it is that you want to do. Uh, so start accumulating those. Start putting them into the freezer so then when you have a, a large amount in there, you can pull them out and process them all at one time. Now the one thing that you do want to make sure is that when you pick them, they're either as ripe as you want them to be right. or bring them in the house and let them ripen for a while before you freeze them. Because right. however ripe they are when they go in the freezer is how ripe they're going to be when you Get ready to process exactly. them. Exactly. There's no more ripening. It's, right. That, that's how they're going to be. That's a fantastic point. So we are just going to get started. We're going to go start pulling those bags out of the freezer, and then we'll show you the process that we have discovered works great. Okay, so I've, we've gone out to the freezer, and we brought in six big bags of the frozen whole tomatoes. It's as easy as opening up these bags, dumping them in here, and then allowing them to thaw out on their own. Now, depending on how many tomatoes you're thawing out at one time, this can be a pretty lengthy process. Uh, this amount of tomatoes will take us about two days to thaw out completely. Um, I will stir them up 
uh, to, uh, you know, kind of mix up everything. Uh, and um, so it'll take longer than you think. Make sure that you're putting this somewhere that um, isn't going to ruin your floors because it will uh, produce condensation on the outside. Yeah. So you'll want it on linoleum or cement. Or at um, least put a big towel under it or something. Well, some kind of barrier between uh, this and anything, any kind of flooring that it would, it would ruin. We have wood floors, so I have to worry about that. So really, the first step is just dump them in there. Now see, it would have been a shame to let these nice tomatoes just go to waste. Absolutely. So, you know, it's it's great to have this as an option when you're super busy. Right. Plus, during this process, if someone breaks into your house, <laughs> you have a great weapon to kill someone with. <laughs> Wait, go, hurry into the freezer, grab a frozen tomato, somebody's coming in. You'd probably even get on the news if you took out a burglar with a frozen tomato. <laughs> really as much as I want to put in here. Um, it's about three quarters of the way full. Uh, so we will move this to a location. I have a cover for it too that I'll put on top of it um, just to make sure that you know a lot of dust or anything uh, doesn't get in there. But I'm going to be checking on this um, every several hours. At first because they're all like totally frozen, I will probably wait about 12 hours. Uh, but I'll start stirring this up just to, you know, make sure that the coldness is even. Um, now, what to be prepared for is the fact that there is going to be a ton of liquid water that is going to separate out of these tomatoes. In the freezing process, all of the water inside of them expands. Number one, it's going to burst the skin of the tomatoes, uh, which will help us in the future. Uh, but it's also going to separate all the water from inside of the tomato away from like the fleshy part. And so in the end, you're going to have a bunch of kind of soggy tomatoes floating in tomato water. Um, and actually, that's going to work to our advantage when we process them. Uh, so keep that in mind. So what are we going to do with these tomatoes? Well, we are actually going to use these tomatoes to make homemade canned barbecue sauce. Nice. Well, the tomatoes have been thawed out in the large bin. And, you know, depending on how many tomatoes you're thawing out one time will determine how long it takes. Now, just make sure that every few hours or so you're stirring them and you're assessing whether or not they are uh, thawed out. Um, after they are thawed out, you're going to find that there's just a lot of liquid, especially if you didn't use some kind of paste tomato. Uh, this past summer, we didn't plant any paste tomatoes, so all of our tomatoes are really filled with water. Um, in the bin, when they're frozen, there's a ton of water. Uh, so what I did after that is I took a, you know, a, a strainer, colander or something, and I scooped up the tomatoes and let as much of the liquid fall as I possibly could back in the bin and then I put them in uh, different you know big stock pots uh, because honestly I was not um, able to take care of them right away so I put them in the stock pots and then I put them in the refrigerator until I had uh, more time to deal with them. Um, I recommend that you do that, put them in the refrigerator, but don't leave them in there for more than a day or two or they'll start to mold and then all of your hard work um, and all of your tomatoes will be wasted. So the next step for these is to uh, separate out the seeds and the skins and uh, then turn them into some kind of tomato sauce and then use them afterwards. Uh, we are going to be turning this batch of tomatoes into barbecue sauce. We're super excited about that. Um, if you're interested in uh, seeing how I do that, let me know in the comment section below and I'd be glad to do a video on that for you guys. So the equipment that we're going to be using for this next step is a pair of kitchen scissors, um, another colander, and a big, a big stock pot to let more of the water drain. And then we're going to be using um, 
what's considered a tomato juicer, but because most of the um, liquid is already out, and this is going to end up giving us kind of a tomato sauce. Um, I want to talk with you a little bit about what this is. Um, this particular, um, you know, kitchen device is called, um, it's called a Kachina Pro Tomato Juicer. Uh, these are available on Amazon for about 30 bucks. We'll put the link to this below. Um, we were able to actually find this, all the parts included, at a thrift store for $10. Um, now, I know that we talk a lot about things that we have gotten at thrift stores. And, um, you know, a couple years before we moved to this homestead, when we were both still working and still had, you know, the funds to be buying things, we started going to thrift stores looking for items that we knew would be very helpful on the homestead. And we purchased them ahead of time, um, knowing that once we got here, our funds and our budget would be much more limited. So um, if you are in the planning stages of, uh, you know, thinking about homesteading or planning to buy your homestead or waiting to move, while you have funds available, start doing that. Start going to thrift stores, garage sales, rummage sales, those kinds of things, and start picking up useful items uh, that will help you on your homestead. So like I said, though, we will put this link uh, below for Amazon. What this device will do is we'll put the tomatoes inside here, we'll turn the crank, and uh, the juice and the pulp will come out here, and then the skins and the seeds will come out on this side. Uh, there's an area here for the skins and the seeds to come out. I'll have a bowl under there to catch it, um, and then all the good stuff will be in here. Um, all of the stuff that you don't want will come out the other side. Um, now, I've done a video using this already uh, when I canned tomato juice and tomato sauce all at the same time. I'll put a link to that video on here. Um, in that video, I gave another tip that um, I actually run the skins and the seeds through two more times after that to maximize the amount of pulp that I'm getting out, um, and I, that really works well for me. Um, now, an advantage of this process where you're freezing first is that you are actually getting out so much of the liquid, so much of the water um, before you even get to this step uh, that you will get a, a thicker sauce right off the bat if you skim off all of that water. And then you won't have to boil it down for hours and hours and hours. So we're going to get started. We're going to show you the process. This is a, a really great two-person project. It goes really fast. The first step that you're going to do is we need to get rid of the, um, the stem portion of the tomatoes. And the easiest way we have found to do that is to actually uh, take the tomato out of your pot and with the kitchen scissors, uh, just grab that stem and, and snip it off and then put your tomato into the colander so that more of that, um, more of that liquid can drain out of the bottom into the pot. Um, and once you have a, a strainer full of that, a colander full, then just pour those into another bowl so that the next person, which will be me, can start putting them through uh, the strainer machine and start cranking it out and separating the seeds and the, um, the skins from that. And that's pretty much the uh, routine and, and the process until all of your tomatoes are done. So Kevin has taken the stems off of all of these tomatoes and they've uh, sat in a, a colander to drain even more. So the next step is just to put them in this uh, this, you know, machine that will get the skins and the seeds off. You just put some in here, crank it, and the seeds and the skins come out this side, and the pulp and the juice come out this side and gather in that container there. See how that happens? Isn't that amazing? And isn't that beautiful? Okay, so that's one spoonful. Let me do, let me just get this done. I don't really have a whole lot in here. I'm not gonna do all these tomatoes with you guys. I'm just giving you an example of how this works. And if you're interested and know more, you can uh, check out the other video that I talked about. Isn't that gorgeous? Look at that. Look how beautiful that is. Now when you're done with this, depending on how you're going to use this um, pulp, 
you know, you can boil this down a little bit further. It's up to you guys. I'm going to stop right there. So you guys, the whole point of this video wasn't to process some tomatoes. It was to let you know that when you're busy in the summer or if you're working full time and you just can't process those tomatoes right away, just pick them off the vine, put them in a bag and throw them in the freezer hole. Don't do a single thing with them because it's easy to take them out, thaw them out, snip off the stem and process them. So you guys, I just wanted to, you know, bring this whole process to your attention because it is so easy and you can do it. Don't be intimidated by all of those tomatoes coming out of the garden and you don't have time or don't be frustrated that because uh, you're working full time or there's only four or five tomatoes coming ripe at one time that you just, you know, give up on it. Don't give up. It's so worth it for you and your family. Uh, so. You guys, thanks so much for stopping by the homestead today. If you're not a subscriber yet, I would really appreciate you hitting the subscribe button below. If you have any questions or comments, go ahead and leave those below. And if you enjoyed this video, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. Until next time, you guys, thanks so much for stopping by the homestead. Take care and God bless.